Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I designed a 3D printable light cover for a strand of NeoPixel LEDs. It'll clip right onto the strand and glow beautifully. It looks a little bit like the Adafruit logo um, and it has legs on the bottom that are going to snap right onto each pixel so that you can have an addressable, controllable light strand uh, for your house or your yard. <laughs> I started out uh, with the 3D printed Adafruit fidget spinner tutorial, and I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the video. I stopped when uh, I had a, the star about like this, since I haven't added any symmetry, anything like that to it yet, and I want to just sculpt this into a more organic shape. So I'm going to select a bunch of these faces. I'm going to select them all. Uh, once you've selected a few, you can double click and it starts to know what you mean. And we're going to see if we can select all these center faces. Now I'm going to go to subdivide. Um, so I'm going to go uh, under modify, subdivide, and it's going to give me a whole lot more faces to work with. Um, and I should be able to grab and pull and play with these until I get a nice, pretty, organic shape. I'm going to subdivide I'm going to hit specify here and I'm going to subdivide the length into two faces, but I'm going to keep the width as just one. Uh, I don't need it quite that complicated, so. All right. At this point, I'm going to add some symmetry to mirror the star into a hollow shape. So we're going to go to mirror, in, mirror duplicate. And we're going to use this body and select the mirror plane is going to be this floor plane here, and we're going to make sure weld is selected so that it becomes one shape. All right, looks good. And now I have a double-sided solid uh, that's been subdivided into a couple of different levels of faces on the front here. Now that I've created the other side of the shape, I want to turn symmetry off so that I can sculpt the two different sides independently of each other. So I'm just going to go here to clear symmetry and select it and say OK. That way I can sculpt on the top and the bottom will not mirror what I'm doing. So I'll go ahead and select these center faces, same way I did before. Oops, we don't want to get, uh, we don't want to get any edges, we just want to do the faces and the double click will really help you select them all quickly. And we're gonna hit modify for edit form and then we're gonna see if we can pull that center section up about 15, oh, I guess it didn't like me selecting before. Uh, let's go to face control here and select faces and select all these center faces and we're gonna pull them up. We'll pull them up about 15 millimeters. That looks good, okay. Then I'll do the same thing on the bottom, but I'm going to go down, and I'm only going to go down about 8 millimeters. Oops. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I want a little bit more of a rippled texture on the surface of the flower, so... I'm going to select a few points on the top and drag them up and down until I get something I like. So let's go and we're just going to pull these down a little bit. Let's, let's try scale. Let's see what happens if we scale them in a little bit. Oh, that looks pretty. So it's making this really nice textured, layered surface on the, on the top of the flower and giving the edges a little bit of a curve over here. I think that looks really nice. I'm going to hit OK. And that was pretty easy. There's a lot of different options in that dialog box that you can play with, uh, different kinds of space control and transforming modes. You can also select vertexes or edges or faces. Um, and it's just really fun to play with all those different things because you get really different effects every single time you do it. So I want to make sure that I didn't go too far. If you pull the faces so that the form starts to turn itself inside out, 
then it won't convert into a T-spline. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish form and just make sure that everything looks good. And it looks pretty good. Uh, if, uh, uh, let me go back in there. And, oops, let's see. We'll just double click down here and go to edit so that we can get back into that same form sculpting. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what happens if you accidentally pull things a little too far. So let's go ahead and pull these and we'll move them. Um, let's see, we'll, we'll translate them just down so that you see the, the form starts to sort of turn itself inside out right here. If you do that, um, then when you try to hit finish form, it'll tell you that the model failed to convert. Um, and the reason it has failed to convert is just because things are inside out and it's crossing itself right here. So uh, this is fixable. If you go under utilities, you can change the view mode and uh, and and do some different kinds of things to make them to make them fixed. But <laughs> I'm not going to go into that too much right now. Just uh, make sure you don't turn the form inside out. I guess. Okay. Now I want to add the clips to the bottom of the light so that it'll fit onto the LED strand. I'm gonna start by setting up some parameters. I have a couple set up in here, but I've gone ahead and measured the little light module with my calipers, and I have all these different dimensions that I wanna put in there. Um, I'm gonna make them dimensions in this parameters window because that's gonna allow me to change them later if it doesn't fit or anything happens. Uh, it'll be really easy to change these parameters, and then the size of the design will just change automatically. So right now I've got light height and light diameter set up at 6.5 and 14.5. I'm giving it a little extra space just because uh, the, the actual dimension of the diameter of the light is more like 13 and a half millimeters, but I'm giving it an extra one because I do need to leave a little easement, a little bit of room so that the light can clip on without breaking uh, the clips off. So let's add a few more parameters here. I'm gonna add uh, the width of the wires that come out of the light. I'll call that wire width. And I'm going to leave this millimeters, and then uh, the wire width was about 6.25. And then let's add, uh, there's a little nubbin on the opposite sides of the light uh, from the wire. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, call it nub, nubbin width, or nub width. Uh, that one was about 5 millimeters. Um, and then I'm going to add the height of the light. Actually, the light, light full height, uh, this is different. The, the height of the light that I added earlier was just up to the, sort of the ring that goes around the light. The light full height is going to include the height of the dome that goes over the top. So that I'm going to make, make it 8. And then we'll do one more, which is the width of the clips. So I'll call that clip width. And we're going to make that 1.5. That should be thin enough that they can clip over the light, but thick enough that they shouldn't break off too easily. All right, now that I've got all these parameters set up, we can start to use them uh, to design this light. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set an offset plane, um, and I'm going to set it above the, the work face uh, at the light height dimension. So I can use those parameters that I just set up anywhere. So I'm going to call this light height. And that's going to go, what is it, uh, 6.5 millimeters up. And that's given me kind of a construction plane right here. You can see it in there. If I turn this off, you can see it's just sitting right there. Um, that is going to be the, the location of where the bottom of the flower is going to go so that the clips can be below it and sitting on the, the work surface. Um, that way I'll know I'll, I have the right height of the clips. So let's go ahead and uh, move this up until it is sitting on that construction plane. And let's see. With forms, it doesn't really, when you've sculpted a form, it doesn't really give you a nice bottom since there's not really a flat side. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it here and make sure that that plane is sitting kind of right, right in, uh, in the very bottom of my, my form so that it's the right shape and height. And that looks pretty good. It's just gonna sit right there and that should give us the right height for our clips. Okay. 
I'm going to turn that body off and we're going to go ahead and make a new sketch that sketches out the light. And let's turn off this construction plane too. So I'm going to new sketch here and I'm going to choose this floor plane. And I'm going to start with a concentric circle. So let's go ahead and do a center diameter circle starting right on this center point. Um, and we're going to use a light diameter as our parameter so that it knows exactly how big to make it. And then I'm just going to hit enter. Um, and it shows you the dimension right here, 14 and a half. So that's working out. I'll we'll just drag this down here. Now, I'm going to do a couple of center rectangles to account for the wires coming out of the sides and the nubbins on the other sides of the lights. So I'm going to go over here to rectangle and choose center rectangle. I'll use the same point here. And the length doesn't really matter, it just has to extend out past the edge of the light. The width though, we want to make sure that that is wire width. So that I have the right uh, width of that rectangle. And then let's go ahead and do one more center rectangle. Uh, you can actually just right click and, or rather, yep, and say repeat center rectangle. We're going to choose that same spot. We're going to make it just long enough it extends out and then make our width uh, nub width. So it's the width of the nubbins on the sides of the lights. Now you can kind of see our light shape is getting set up here. Next, I want to do a couple of little offsets. I want to do an offset for the dome part of the light that's going to be up sort of inside the flower. So I'm going to go to offset here and I'm going to offset this by, is about a millimeter, so we'll go ahead and offset that by a millimeter. So now we have the dome uh, circle set up here. And then I'm going to do one more offset because I want the clips to live in this sort of area right here. Um, so we're going to do an offset outwards from that same um, circle, but we're going to make this one clip width. So that ends up being one and a half millimeters thick. All right, that looks pretty good. I think we've got pretty much everything we need. So, oops. And I'm going to hit OK once it's, once it's in there. Uh, it's not letting me. Oh, it's telling me down here, one or more of the selective curves has already been offset. Uh, I might be, oh, that's what happened. So my problem was when I tried to offset the, um, the center ring, I went outwards instead of inwards. So let's give that another try. We're going to offset it instead of one millimeter, we're going to offset it negative one millimeter. Okay, there. That's the right direction. Now, <laughs> this is still our original curve. We can offset one outwards um, clip width. Okay, there we go. Work that time. So, this is going to be the shape of our clip right here. Um, and you can see it's nice and curved. It looks like it's going to hug that pretty tightly. Especially, I did uh, allow for some ease in here because you remember the light itself is actually about 13 and a half millimeters, but this circle is 14 millimeters, which means that I've just got my ease already built in. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit stop sketch. And we've got our light uh, built out and ready to go. Now we're gonna start extruding. So I'm gonna take these four sections which I want to be the clips. Whoops, let's not get the plane. And we're going to go ahead and extrude those. And we'll extrude them up. We'll go up about, uh, well, we just want to go higher than the light height so that we know it's going to intersect for sure with the, um, with the flower that we made. So let's go light, full height, and then we'll say plus one. 
just so that we know it's a little higher, maybe plus two because it's not a real solid bottom. And we'll go ahead and choose new body here. That works great. So now we've got these four clips. Uh, if we turn our flower body back on, looks like they're intersecting with it pretty well. So that works out pretty well. Let's turn that back off again. Now the clips, I want them to kind of wrap around the bottom of the light. So let's turn our sketch back on and we're going to find a couple more. We're going to find these sections right here that are technically they're going to be underneath the light when it's finished. Uh, and let's select all four of those. I'm holding down shift in order to get them all selected. I'm going to turn off my origins here so that I can you know, in my way. And now we're going to extrude these guys. I just hit the E button and we're just going to go one millimeter. Um, and we're going to choose join right here so that they all join onto those bodies. And that looks pretty good. Uh, we don't want them to break off, so the last thing I'm going to do to these clips is I'm going to add a chamfer right here. That's going to make it print more nicely and also um, we'll give it an angle so that the clips are still going to stick out, but they're not going to be as, as easily broken. So I've selected all four of those faces. I'm going to go to chamfer right here, and we're just going to chamfer them by one millimeter. And that looks pretty good. It has made a sort of little diagonal clip there. And I think that's going to work really well. All right, the next thing we want to do is carve out a little hollow in the bottom of the flower for the dome of the light. So I'm going to turn this flower off again. Um, and now I'm going to extrude one more time. I'm going to select just the center part of this circle, the one we offset inside. Uh, it's just the, the size of the dome. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude that. I'm hitting E. I'm going to extrude that up and my distance is going to be light full height. Because that's what I measured with my calipers. Um, there we go. Now, uh, to make it a dome, I'm just going to select this edge and I'm going to use a fillet. And then I'll just fill it until it looks pretty dome-like. That looks good. It doesn't need to be exact, it just needs to kind of center on the um, on the flower so that so that it has a nice, the, the light lays against the flower really well. And you can see it's, it's touching there. So what we want to do now is we want to combine the flower and the light um, and use a cut operation so that we can carve out a little bit of that, that bottom. So that is here under modify. We're going to hit combine. My target body is going to be the flower. My tool body is going to be this little light we extruded. Um, and we're going to use join. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted to do. We were going to use cut. So let's try that one more time. I'm, I'm undoing that um, with command Z. And now I'm going to go back to combine again. And instead, of, I'm going to choose cut. So target body, tool body, cut. Okay, there we go. Now you can see that there's kind of a little dome-shaped indentation in the bottom, so that light should sit in there just really nicely. Next, I'm going to make the little holes in the flower. So to do that, I'm going to make another sketch. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to leave these guys here, though, because I want to make sure that the holes don't intersect with the clips at all. I want to make sure that that uh, stays separate. So for my new sketch, I'm going to, let's see, let's make it so that we're looking at it right from the top, and I'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, the flower, let's make sure it's aligned right. There's my flower, my original flower sketch, but we're going to actually use the body. It looks like it's aligned up and down pretty easily, so we're going to start by making an ellipse. So I'm going to use my ellipse tool right here. I'm going to zoom right in and I'm going to make my center of my ellipse maybe right about here. And then we'll go down about four millimeters and out maybe about two millimeters. And then we have a nice little ellipse that should look pretty good if we turn that flower back on. It looks like it'll make a nice little, little hole in the flower. Um, maybe I want it a little bit bigger. So let's try. Let's try that again. We're here. We're going to go to ellipse and 
place it here. This time we'll try six millimeters and three millimeters. And turn that flower back on. Yeah, that looks a little bit better to me. So we're going to do the same kind of uh, effect where we're going to take a, a sketch and we're going to make a circular pattern. Uh, same thing that we did with the flower petals in order to make the, the pattern happen. I'm going to select this one. My center point is going to be My center point is going to be here, and my object is this one. Um, we're going to make five of them, and it looks like that looks perfect. They are perfectly spread around. We're going to hit OK. Let's turn our flower back on, make sure that looks right. Yep, that looks fantastic. They're all lined up. So now I'm going to hit Stop Sketch, and then I'm going to extrude all of these. And we're going to do the same thing we did with that dome, where we're going to combine it with the main flower body and and then cut. So let's go ahead and select all of these. And I'm going to hit extrude and I'm going to extrude them up a whole bunch. Let's go 20 millimeters. So they're nice and tall. Then we're going to say cut. And we'll turn our flower body back on so that we know if we're going all the way through. What does it look like? Oh, it looks like we need to go a little taller. So let's make them 30 millimeters. Whoops. See if they cut all the way through. Yep, that looks good. And we'll hit OK. All right, and now we've got these lovely little holes going all the way through our flower. The last thing I want to do is give the clips a little bit more strength. Uh, I don't want them to break off when they're clipping onto the lights. So the way I'm going to do that is just to find... Oh, first we have to join them to the body. So we're going to join them so that they're all one, one body. Um, use that with combine and grab this one and then the tool bodies will be all four of these and then for now let's say keep tools um, and we'll make a new component too just in case we want to come back and uh, change the size of the flower do anything later since we're kind of combining it all together it's a good idea to to make a new component at this point point. and here it is down here um, so we have, we can go ahead and um, turn these guys off. Oops, so, did that work? Nope, I had cut. Ugh. Let's try this one more time. We're going to say combine. And my tool body are going to be these guys. And this time we're going to say join. There we go. Okay. Now, we've got one component, and I'm going to turn off these bodies so that we're just looking at this one component. And uh, it has everything all combined together. But I don't want these clips to break off, so what I'm going to do is go in here and make a chamfer of just to kind of, well, we'll just do a, maybe a half a millimeter. Just to give it a little bit more oomph there so that it won't break out. Let's try 0.75 millimeters. See if that'll work. Yeah, it gives it a little bit of, a, of an edge there, which I think is just going to make that joint a little bit stronger. And so let's go ahead and do that to all four of these. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So the last thing we want to do is orient this so that it's going to 3D print as easily as possible. Um, the clips down here, we're going to need some supports if we print it like this, and then the supports are probably going to get tangled up with the clips, and the clips might break. So what I want to do is rotate it 180 degrees so that this surface is down on the print bed and that the clips will just print straight up in the air. I think that'll make it easier. We can remove a little bit of support from the edge here, but it's a pretty gentle slope. It might it might print pretty well. So what we'll do is just go ahead and select it, and I'm going to hit M for move, and then we're just going to rotate it 180 degrees here. Hit OK, and there we go. Now, it looks like it might be just about ready to export to the printer. 
So the way I do that is right click on, on the body and go to save as STL. And then I have this checkbox checked for send to 3D print utility. Uh, it's going to go straight to my simplified 3D application. And there it is, it showed up here. I'm going to go ahead and double click the name so that I can change it. We'll call it flower. Uh, hit center and arrange and then under the process settings I want to make sure that it is 0% infill. Uh, this model is actually solid, it's not hollow, but we really want it to be hollow in the middle as much as possible so that the light will diffuse through it. So make sure that your infill is at zero. Um, I'm also going to print at a really low resolution. I want it to look really pretty and I want to not have as many supports or overhangs as possible, so I'm printing all the way at uh, just 0.1 millimeter. It might take a little bit longer. Um, it, it'd probably work just as fine with two or three, 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters, but um, I'm also gonna use a raft just to make sure that it stays uh, level on the bed. And I'm gonna use some support material. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I'm using, I have dual extruders on my printer, but I'm gonna make sure that I'm using the same extruder for the support just so that it doesn't ever stick and get in the way. Since light needs to shine through this, uh, it wants to be really beautiful. Okay. And uh, the other nice thing about this, since, since it is a flower light strand, it's pretty easy to print multiple ones at a time. So once you get your print settings dialed in, you can just go up here and copy and then paste and paste it a bunch of times. And we're going to do eight. And then if I'm going to click center and arrange, they all line up on the print bed pretty nice. And I can print all eight of them at once, which makes my life a little easier for printing a whole lot of flowers. All right. And that is... Uh, just about everything for designing this flower. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you like and subscribe uh, for more Adafruit fun videos. Thanks a lot.